Hello everyone and welcome to the first devlog video about my new game which is called Homegrown. It's going to be a very small simple farming game about growing vegetables in your garden, selling them at the local market for profit and then reinvesting that back into your garden so that you can grow more, sell more, etc etc. If you're wondering where the city builder game is then check out my previous video, I explained that all there. Um, but right now I'm just really excited to get started with this project, I'm raring to go. So I'm going to jump right into it and I'll show you how it's going in a bit. So here we go, this is how it all starts. Um, here's your first look at the new game and it is a lovely green square. I've just been setting up the engine, generating the terrain and that's the first thing that I've got rendered here. So a good start, now I'm moving on to camera controls. Got the basic camera control set up now, moving around, rotating, zooming in and out. And to be honest, I pretty much just copied the camera code across from the City Builder game, um, which is another reason why I think this project's going to be a lot quicker and simpler than my previous ones, because a lot of the concepts, especially at the beginning, are going to be things that I've already implemented in either the City Builder game or Aquilinox, so I'm going to be able to reuse a lot of code. So the first most fundamental feature that I want to add to the game is the ability to edit the terrain because before you can plant anything you need to be able to dig away the grass and like create flower beds to plant stuff in. So I've got started with that here by allowing every tile in the terrain to have a different shape and I've created three shapes for now, the grass, the dirt and the path. And at the moment I'm just generating these shapes in the code because they're all very simple shapes. So right now I've just given every tile a random one of those three shapes and that all works quite well, except of course that some of the shapes are at different heights and that means that sometimes you get gaps between the tiles. So what I need to work on next is generating some quads to fill in those gaps. Just finished writing the code for generating those side quads, which as you can see has filled in all the gaps. And the way that this works is that each tile is responsible for its north and west edge. And what it does is it just gets the neighboring tile, checks if there's a height difference between them. And if there is, then it just generates a quad to fill in that gap. And the quad then takes the color of the, the higher tile. And as you can see, that's worked quite nicely and filled in all the gaps. So at the moment this terrain mesh is being generated once and only once when the game loads but what I want to be able to do is to be able to edit this terrain at any time and update the shape of any of the terrain tiles whenever I want. So what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up a system that's going to allow me to do that and it's very similar to the system I use in the city builder game for the road mesh um, but the way it works is that the system keeps track of where the vertex data for each tile is stored in the memory and then when I want to update one of the tiles, for example this tile here, it removes the old vertex data from memory, generates the new vertex data and adds that to memory, and then updates the reference. And it's also keeping track of where all of the gaps are in memory, so that it tries to fill up those gaps first when possible. I just wanted to quickly mention one part of my development plan for this game is to really try to focus on implementing just the most fundamental features first, and implement them very simply to begin with and then add all of the finer details and the polishing touches later. So I really want to aim straight for that minimum viable product this time. Um, so do just bear in mind that I'm not going to be worrying too much about the visuals of the game for a while. That's going to come later with all of the other visual effects and particles and smooth transitions and the other less fundamental parts of the game. So I've got the mesh editing working now, which means I can set any tile of the terrain mesh to be any one of those three shapes. And that means that I can now start creating my first garden, um, although I can't plant anything there yet. But that is what I'm going to start work on tomorrow. So the plan for today is to get the first objects into the game and set up the entity system which should hopefully be a very quick task because I'm pretty much going to use the same system that I used in the city builder game, maybe with a few small changes. 
Um, but hopefully by the end of the day, I'll be able to grow some plants in the game. So the entity system is all set up, pretty much just copied across from the City Builder game. So I'm using a component-based architecture as always, and this has now allowed me to create my first entities and add them to the world, which you can't see here, because of course, in a component-based architecture, the entity class itself doesn't actually have any functionality. Um, that all gets added to the entity in the form of components. So the first component that I want to add now is going to be a mesh component, so that each entity can have a mesh and be rendered and visible in the scene. So the first entities are in the world and it's starting to look a little bit more like a game now. Um, you might recognise some of these. This is the house from the City Builder game and then there are a few trees and plants from Aquilinox. Um, so this is an example of one of the entity files here. This is the entity file for the house and you can see I've added that render component which just contains the mesh information for the house. Um, one change I had to make from the City Builder game is that the entities in this game can have multiple meshes uh, because like in Equinox, the plants are going to be able to grow so they'll have multiple model stages. Um, so I had to make some changes for that and here's an example of one of the entity files with multiple meshes. So next up I'm going to work on allowing the player to place plants into the world and for that I first need to create a new plant model in Blender. So here's the new carrot model in the game. It was so nice to be back making low poly plants in Blender again. It was like I was back working on Aquilinox, like the good old days. Um, so at the moment this plant's just getting placed wherever I click on the terrain, but this is a tile based game, so it should only be one plant per tile, um, and that's what I'm going to implement now. The tile placing is working now, so whichever tile I click on a carrot gets placed in the middle of that tile. Um, it doesn't work if there's already something in that tile, and in the entity file I can also set what terrain type the tile has to be. So for example it won't let me place the carrots on the grass here, it has to be placed on a soil tile. Next up I've been working on a growth component which allows the plants to grow. Um, very simple, just a timer that ticks up and then after a certain amount of time it tells the render component to move to the next model stage. Because if you remember some of the entities have multiple model stages and you can see that working in the game here. So when I place a carrot, it starts off as seeds and then over time it progresses through the model stages to a full grown carrot. Just been finishing off my work on the entities by um, working on how they get removed from the scene and then using that I've created a harvestable component which allows me to harvest uh, the fully grown vegetables in the game. So in the game, if I go, I've, I've added some temporary buttons at the top here as well, just because it was getting hard to remember which tool I was using. But if I use the harvester tool now, um, you can see I can click on the fully grown vegetables to harvest them. And nothing actually happens when I harvest them at the moment, but obviously that will come in the future. Good morning everyone, it's the start of a new week and I've started off today by stealing some more content from my previous games. Uh, so we've got a few more vegetables here which I took from Quillinox and then I also took the code for the grid tile highlighter from the city builder game so you can now see which tile you're currently selecting. Um, but the plan for today is to start work on the item system and the inventory so I'm going to get going with that now. The work on the items is coming along quite well this morning. I planned it all out and then I implemented some of the base classes for the items and the inventory and I'm now just setting up a really simple UI um, to display your inventory and all the items that are in it. So the inventory system is now up and running. I've just been creating some icons for the first few items in the game. And now in the harvestable components, when you harvest one of the vegetables in the game, the relevant item gets added to the inventory and that then gets displayed in this UI here. So if I go ahead and harvest some of these vegetables, 
you can see the inventory filling up with the correct items. Next up, I've been associating actions with the items so that if you click on one of the items in the inventory, it determines what tool you're using in the game. So for example, if I click on the spade, I can now dig in the world. Or if I click on the paving stones, I can start placing paving. If I click on one of the seeds, then I can place that particular seed into the ground and so on. It's a day later now and I've been working lots on the item system and it's pretty much finished so I want to show you a quick demonstration of it all working now. So like I showed you yesterday you can select um, the item so I'll select the spade here. That now shows up at the bottom, it's like an equip slot showing you what you're holding. Um, I can use that to dig out some, some beds here. Then I can select the paving stones to start placing some path. Um, the items now also get used up as you use them so you can see uh, the number next to the seeds here is going down as I place them and once all of those seeds are placed then that item gets removed from the inventory as you would expect and then again like I showed you yesterday I can use the shears to harvest the plants and I realize that shears aren't the best tool to be using to, to harvest carrots um, but that's something I can fix in the future of course but yeah, in general this is all working very nicely now. Next time I'm going to be adding shops to the game so that you can sell your vegetables, make some money, and then use that money to buy more seeds and more equipment for your garden. But that is going to have to be in the next video. So that is going to be it for this week. I'm really happy about how it's going so far. I've just been enjoying it so much. I've been more productive than I've been for ages and I'm just very excited about continuing this project. I hope you guys are finding it a bit interesting as well and aren't too disappointed about the City Builder game, but I think this was definitely the right decision for me, and it should also mean more regular devlog videos, so that'll be good. Before I finish, I want to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Dieter Reiner, Harry Chung, John Needham, Christoph Herpo, Adam Farkas, Simon Gander, Mario Martins, Gregory Horvath, Hagen Vingard, Connaughton Adventures, Busvava Valta, Denis Gladkov, Sergei Ankinovich, Thomas Johnson, Leandro Di Pietro, Andrew Witt, Marek Mikolajczyk, Sean McCrory, Caffeine Coda, Timothy Gibbons, Alexander Chavez, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>